Welcome to round four of the sixth round World Speedway Championship of 1999. The Lech Grand Prix Series reaches the British Isles here in the heart of the Industrial Midlands at Coventry. We've been to Prague, we've been to Sweden, we've been to Poland. Finally, we arrive in the UK. And these are the guys who will be challenging for that World Championship of 1999, presently led by Thomas Golog, the ultimate Polish sporting hero. The men chasing him, Jimmy Nielsen and defending champion Tony Rickardson. He's the man at the back of the truck there on the right-hand side. Always immaculately turned out, always with really trick equipment. Jimmy Nielsen, his Swedish compatriot, did second last year. Thomas Golob leading the championship now. Hans Nielsen, the great Danish former champion who is threatening to retire finally as he nudges 40. Chris Louis heads the home challenge here. But of course, that's expanded by the fact that the Coventry homeboys, Americans Greg Hancock and Billy Hamill, are also in the lineup. Andy Smith there, the Yorkshireman, riding number 16. Joe Screen riding number 19. Mark Loram, who was the astonishing winner of the second round in Sweden. And Scott Nichols, the 21 year old, rides for Poole. He is the, uh, the guest artiste for the night, the wild card for this Coventry round. Mark Loram presently in 10th place in the championship thanks to that amazing 25-point victory in Sweden on June the 4th. And here we have a, a really mild and beautiful summer evening in Coventry. A packed house, mainly in t-shirts and shorts, to enjoy the action as we get lined up for the first heat of the night. And number 18 will be in there. Number 21, Dados will be in there. Number six, Greg Hancock, who's uh, really going to enjoy himself this evening because he says it's fantastic to be in a stadium where you hear your name being uh, cheered every time it's mentioned. And these, of course, are his home fans. In the background, you can see the red and white banners which support Thomas Golob. They are often the noisiest supporters around the place. Number 24, the man starting from the outside there in yellow and black is that 21-year-old pool pirate who actually was born in Ipswich, Suffolk, which is Chris Louis country. And that's Nichols. So there we have Nichols 24, Dados 21, Hancock riding 6, and Carlson riding 18. Mikhail Carlson, that is of course because there are two uh, Carlson brothers, his brother Peter. So Mikhail Carlson, the 25-year-old there, has the hot inside line, starting in the red lane alongside him greg hancock of course former champion winner in 1997 six last year who's going to get the whole shot and it's hancock who bursts through the californians there at the front and he stays there hancock's at the front and it's nichols it's nichols the kid from pool who blasts through into second place and tailing at the back number 21 robert dados dados from lublin in poland tailed right off at the back at the moment and look at this for second place between Scott Nichols and the man in red Mikhail Carlson. Carlson taking the wide line here and Greg Hancock of course on his home track well in charge a quick glance over his right shoulder just checking the opposition out no danger there. The former world champion looking good here in the opening heat in front of his home crowd because he of course rides for Coventry Bees. And look at that man, Scott Nickel, getting his head down. Experience for him, of course, good experience riding a great, these sort of class acts here in a World Championship Grand Prix. And it looks as if he's going to hold on to that second place ahead of the hard charging Carson. So Greg Hancock takes heat one to a tumultuous reception from uh, this uh, warmly bathed in warm sunshine. The crowd is here, absolutely beautiful evening. Thumbs up from Greg Hancock in his customary Exide blue. Shakes hands with Scott Nichols. So Nichols finishes, finishes second, goes to heat eight. Mikhail Carlson comes out again in heat five. Robert Dados in heat six. Hancock, incidentally, remember, was uh, controversially disqualified in uh, the second from the second round. Didn't enjoy that much at all, but uh, he's he'd scored second place in the opening round in the Czech Republic. And so far, a total of 31 puts him in 8th place in the series, just one point behind Tony Casper and Joe Screen. And here is the Californian. Look at that style, perfectly choreographed into the first turn. And look at Scott Nichols hanging it out outside him. 
not getting the drive he wants to go forward, but certainly spectacular as he body leans his weight to the inside and follows in the wheel tracks of that ex-world champion. What great company to be racing in. Here in a British Grand Prix. Scott Nichols, obviously a star of the future. Heat two brings together number 11, Tony Casper. He's taken the red lane on the inside. Lee Adams of Australia in blue. John Jorgensen of Denmark in white. And Mark Loram of Great Britain, the man who won the second round. There he is. He's got a wild card entry, of course, for the rest of the series after that startling victory in Sweden. Well, Loram then went, Loram then went from 25 points in Sweden to two in Poland. So he'll be hoping to improve tonight here in Coventry. And once again, we know that around this Coventry track, the whole shot is absolutely essential. If you get out in front, it helps a lot. And it's, is it that blue gate again? And it is. Out of the blue, shoots Lee Adams, the Australian. And the yellow and black fighting back. And that's Mark Loram, a man who does find ways to pass. He's one of the great passers, even Peter Collins himself, the 1976 world champ, himself a master of the art of riding from the back, really rates Mark Loram's ability to do this. And here is Loram attacking the white helmet of John Jorgensen and getting the drive inside him and leaving him for dead. And I think Jorgensen's got a problem. That was the reason Jorgensen, Jorgensen's engine has gone. So he is out of it. Bad luck, engine failure stopped John Jorgensen, but helps Mark Loram. He's through to second place behind the man in blue, Lee Adams. Lee Adams riding number 13, the 28-year-old Australian. And he wins it. Ahead of Mark Loram and Tony Casper in red. So, number 13, lucky for some. And in the case of Lee Adams, who's uh, Australian rather than English, he's not worried about riding on lucky 13. He wins heat two. Good start to the evening for him. Lee Adams at the moment down in 11th place in the table. He's co scored consistently in each round and finished third, in fact, on the podium in Sweden. Beg your pardon, he just missed the podium. He was fourth in Sweden, got 16 points, 25 in total, joint 11th with John Jorgensen. Well, uh, already he's showing signs of gaining the advantage over Jorgensen here because uh, the unfortunate Jorgensen went out when his engine failed in that race. So he takes no points out of it. The Owen brothers, Jawa. Remember, the engines here just uh, tend to be the Czech-produced the Czech Jawas and the Italian-manufactured GMs. And look at Laura absolutely not holding back having missed the start altogether he dives his own brother's silkaline bike up the inside to take third place and the man he shoved aside there was tony casper but casper eventually as he goes for the rip off there finished in third place so he gained one point mark laura actually born in malta 28 years old now and look at the way he got the drive up the inside there when he realised all was not well for the luckless Jorgensen glances down at his stricken motor and his race is run. We move on to heat three and this brings out Gustafsson, number 15. He takes the inside line in red, Chris Louie in blue. This is Louie tending his starting gate. Outside him, Billy Hamill, the 1996 world champion, the Californian, there in white. And Andy Smith, veteran Englishman Andy Smith, is outside him in yellow and black. This is Billy Hamill on the right-hand side. Adjusting that clutch. And that is Andy Smith. Hamill, of course, had a serious back injury at the in the last round of the Grand Prix series of 1998, so he was offered a wild card for the whole of this season. And Hamill's in trouble. Hamill's in trouble. He's calling for a spare bike. And here it comes. And this looks like Shane Parker, the Aussie who rides for whole Vikings, who's racing out 
with the spare bike. You'll have to run, Billy. You'll have to you'll have to run. Remember, two minutes exclusion time. He's just got two minutes to get himself back onto that line. How's he going to get through? Oh, neat. Hamill wheelies across into the infield. But in fact, he's being waved on. He's being waved on by the red clad starter. Oh, what rotten look. So excluded, out of time, Billy Hamill. Not a, an auspicious start to the evening for him. So Hamill rides out on his home territory as well, his home track. Billy Hamill graciously accepting, like the gentleman he, he is, that uh, he's out of that race. And apparently the throttle popped on that number one bike. And Hamill, in fact, is uh, due for an evening of mechanical misfortune. He eventually gets through three bikes during the course of the evening. He blows a head gasket on a practice start amongst several misfortunes. Not a good night coming up for Billy Hamill. So we have three guys in the run. Who's going to take the start? Oof. Chris Louis using up a fair amount of oil. Oh, and getting trapped out of the gate. Well and truly, Gustafsson inside him, Andy Smith outside him, and it's Smith in the lead, and Chris Louis at the back. Louis going the long way round. The uh, clouds of oil smoke still hang, hanging in the air as he goes through them, and he's completely burned off number 15, Gustafsson. And here he is, Chris Louis, absolutely on the charge. Gustafsson goes from the outside. Great racing here at Coventry, the British round in the Brandon Stadium of the World Championship. Henke Gustafsson riding number 15 from Orebro in Sweden. He rides the Italian GM, but at the moment he's no match for the pace of the two British guys ahead of him. And Andy Smith, 33-year-old veteran, hanging on there at the front. I think he can win this. Chris Louis got his head down and chasing hard. But it's Andy Smith who takes victory. Chris Louis second. Henke Gustafsson in third place. Gustafsson. 29-year-old. From Sweden. He scores one point there. At the, at the moment on 14 points down in eighth place in the series. Three places lower than uh, where he was. Look at that. Chris Louis setting a light to the place. Talking about setting a light to the place, incidentally, there were uh, several cars went up in flames on this extremely hot night in Coventry in the car park outside the stadium as we reached uh, a rather warmer than usual climax to proceedings. Just goes to prove what a beautiful summer evening we had here at Coventry for the British round of the Lech Grand Prix series. And there is Chris Louis taking the long charge around the outside of Henke Gustafsson and making it stick. But what a great start and a great finish for Andy Smith. Again, superb choreography from the guys as they go through the pit turn. And we move on to Heat 6. Heat 6, Tony Casper on the inside. Alongside him, Anderson. Alongside him, Dados. And on the outside, Billy Hamill. Is there anything Hamill can do about this? Hamill needs to uh, retaliate quickly after suffering that exclusion from his first ride. Oh, and he gets a lot of airtime under the front where he wheelies out of that yellow gate. And he's lost it off the start completely. But Dados has gone down. Dados and Casper. Oh, Casper nastily hits hard on the outside. The St. John's ambulance men are running straight away to see how he is. And that was a nasty hit for number 11, Tony Casper. But it was Dados that went down first. Dados went down first, he was okay. But Casper, the 36-year-old from Prague, there may have been contact there. I don't know whether there was contact there or whether Casper went down entirely of his own accord. But anyway, Casper hits the fence hard and he's well winded. I'll leave it up to you to decide whether there was contact, but certainly well, Dados isn't in the rerun, so he is out. So number 21, Robert Dados on his Jawa, the 22-year-old from Lublin in Poland, is excluded from the rerun. And that gives... Oh, and Hamel once again wheelies spectacularly out of the yellow trap and goes all the way around the outside. 
can he make it round? It's just outside, Tony Casper in red. Casper amazingly recovered from that severe winding, but can't quite hold off the brilliant Billy Hamill. Billy Hamill, Californian former world champ at the front. Riding number 20, look at those eyes, they mean business, don't they? Billy Hamill riding the from San Marino in the USA, 28 years old, riding the Italian GM. Started his career off at Costa Mesa, the Sonny Boys, Bruce Pennell, Dennis Segalos, and of course his dear friend Greg Hancock, to whom he, uh, to whom he, who he beat in the 1996 series. In fact, Hancock finished in third place behind him that year, and then went on to take the title in 1997. Reversed that decision. But look at these two, Tony Casper holding off number 14, Anderson. And he succeeds in doing so. So Brian Anderson of Denmark, the 28-year-old from Denmark, has to settle for third place behind this man, Billy Hamill. And to Tony Casper, Antonin Casper recovering very, very bravely from that um, not particularly gentle impact with the boarding at the side. Hamill wins it from Tony Casper, Brian Anderson, and excluded was Robert Dados. Absolutely dead level. But look at that man going for the outside line and hanging it on just a little bit harder and a little bit later. That was Billy Hamill going the long way around. Here we have Casper. And Brian Anderson side by side through the first turn. But look at Billy Hamill. Was a man ever more intent on getting to the front. Already, he's round Anderson. What, these slow-mos are just terrific, aren't they? Billy Hamill then takes his first win of the night. We're going to take a quick break. And that's Tony Casper feeling a bit second-hand. Back to Coventry. And Greg Hancock on the inside in the red lane. Andy Smith alongside him. Mark Loram, the second of the British riders in white. And Peter Carlson, the elder of the Carlson brothers, the 29-year-old from Gulspang in Sweden. On the jower, on the outside. And a great start from the Manning. Oh, and they're all over the place. Greg, Greg Hancock, there was contact there between Greg Hancock and a merciless Mark Loram. And Loram emerges at the front. Hancock desperately hanging on outside. Andy Smith, is there anything you can do about it? At the moment, he's been blitzed by the Brits here in Coventry. Greg tried to hold that inside line, but Andy Smith's got the better of him right now. And at the front, running away with it, really, is Mark Loram, the man who won, surprisingly, the second round in Sweden in June. Peter Carlson being well tailed off by these guys now. This is a terrific contest between these two guys. Hancock tries to get the drive down early, go for the inside line, can't make it. Looks again towards the outside. Goes again for the inside. Look how determined he is. He says he's feeling more confident tonight. It's great to come to the line knowing that you're going to be tough to beat. But he hasn't managed to beat those two Brits. And this time, Mark Loram takes it. Warm applause from an English crowd. Loram takes it, but what a drastic... I'm looking forward to seeing the slow-mos at that first turn. Loram grabs it and... Uh, a gracious wave of the left hand there from Greg Hancock, so um, no hard feelings after that hectic first turn that he lost out on to both Mark Loram and Andy Smith. Andy Smith down in 19th place with just 12 points in the series so far. Now take a look at this. This is our slow-mo at the start. When it really looked as if this guy, Greg Hancock, had it. Oh, but look, no, oh, he really got the power too far on. Desperately overslid, and by the time he'd recovered from that, Lauren was able to look round and say, I've got you, bud. And Andy Smith had crept up the inside. So that's how a whole shot can go wrong. Greg Hancock's just demonstrated. Even on a track you know as well as he knows this. So Mark Loram, who rides for pool, won that one. Now we see for the first time championship leader Thomas Golob on the inside. Alongside him, the great Hans Nielsen, Mark Loram back there, number 23, in white. And Karga's on the outside. Karga at number nine on the outside, Brian Karga from Denmark. Oh, and look at that, Thomas Golob absolutely turns himself inside out in the first turn and completely loses 
the whole shot or any chance of it. Oof, and the man at the front in blue, Hans Nielsen. The 39-year-old threatening retirement at the end of this season. But when you're still, and he's going to, no, I was going to say he's about to lose the, the lead to Mark Loram, but no. The elder statesman of world speedway hangs in there in the lead. Mark Loram desperately chasing Brian Carger in yellow. Thomas Golob un unable to make his, his fans unusually silent. He can't make any progress. He's stuck at the back there after hashing up that first turn. And remember, he's the championship leader. Loram head down, backside over the rear fender. Rather Peter Collins like. No wonder Peter Collins thinks that he's as good as he was at getting to. Oh no! And engine failure there for Hans Nielsen as they went across the line. He lost it. Mark Loram took the win. And he must feel he's a very lucky boy tonight. Well, if that's the sort of fortune that's a look, he shakes his head slightly as if to say, well, I didn't deserve that. I think you can safely say that uh, Hans Nielsen was the man who should have had that. So Hans Nielsen, winner of 22 FIM gold medals, loses it on the line to Mark Law and Brian Carger in third place and Thomas Golob a subdued fourth. Well, he certainly wasn't subdued in the first turn, but he was subdued for the rest of the race. Just glimpsing his red helmet on the inside there when it looked as if he had what it took to take it. Look at the way he sits up in that, on that bike. But he got it all wrong there. Look at that. How can a man get himself into that sort of position? Fabulous flexi action from Thomas Golub. But all it did was take him from first place to fourth and there was no way back. So Poland's superstar Sixth to fourth place and stays there in heat 11. Not what he's looking for tonight, if he's going to sustain that lead in the championship. But look what happened here. And there was Hans Nielsen glancing down at that stricken engine. Fastest heat time so far, 53 seconds. That was a tremendous pace. Three seconds by 3.2 seconds, the fastest so far of the night for Lee Adams, the Australian. Heat 12 brings out Jimmy Nilsson in red. The man who's lying second in the championship was second last year in the title chase. And this man, Jason Crump, Bristol-born Australian, son of Phil Crump, who was a great rider and uh, star of the British firmament himself years back. Lee Adams there, the fastest man so far around this Coventry track tonight, is in white. And outside him, Andy Smith, number 16, in yellow. And look at that spent, splendid Coventry Peacock striding across the line there with the 15 second board. Not the last glimpse we'll have of her tonight. So Jimmy Nilsson, number two, the 32 year old on the Jawa from Stockholm, he's on the inside berth here. Alongside him Jason Crump and Lee Adams of Australia and the outside man. Great shot of those heads at the tape. Who's going to take the whole shot? And initially, oh, I was going to say initially it was the man in red, Jimmy Nilsson, and he's got it cleanly. But look at the man in yellow. The unstoppable Andy Smith. Berserks his way through underneath Lee Adams, and Lee Adams, who won that fastest heat, is suddenly in last place here in heat 12. Number eight, Jason Crump in second place. That's the man who's leading it, Jimmy Nilsson. You're never too old to win a world championship, and in 32, I'm sure Jimmy Nilsson feels that he could yet do it. Jason Crump, riding at number eight, 23 year old. Oh, coming under fire now from the man 10 years his senior, Andy Smith, the Yorkshireman. I don't think there's anything that Andy Smith can do about this. A quick glance over his left shoulder confirms second place for the man in blue. That's Jason Crump finishes second, but it's this man, Jimmy Nilsson, who sped off with victory. It was over the 60-second mark, but he won't be worried about that. Times are irrelevant in this game. It's who gets across the line first. Jimmy Nilsson takes it. He goes on to heat 18. Jason Crump to 17. Andy Smith finishes third. Lee Adams in fourth place. And there was Andy Smith dropping the clutch very, very fast. No feathering there, just gets the power down, finds everybody's got ahead of him, and then cuts up the inside. 
Look at Jason Crump almost doing a Thomas Golob there on the Hagen shock spike. And Andy Smith tearing through the inside, but all the time it's Jimmy Nelson who's taken advantage of the gap through the inside and has taken the lead. So Jimmy Nilsson presently second on 56 points, just nine points adrift of Tomasz Golub. He takes the win in Heat 12. Heat 14 brings together a very, very confident defending champion. Number one in the red corner is Tony Rickards, and that man in the yellow corner, Chris Louie. Inside him, number 18, Michael Carlson, and number 19, Joe Screen. He of the flying tassels. What could Joe Screen make of this? And it's Joe Screen, the 26-year-old, in blue. Oh, ripping round, blocking the yellow and the white. But not, can he hang on outside? The man in red at the front, Tony Rickardson, dominating this. The man in white, Carson, having to give best to that wild blue helmet at number 19, Joe Screen. Screen attacking Rickardson round the outside. Tremendous action here. The man in yellow and black not out of it yet is Chris Louie. Fabulous shot of them from the rear as they go into the first turn. Louie tries to get underneath. Michael Carson can't find the room. This time goes for the outside line. Tony Rickardson, though, is looking dangerous, isn't he? Rickardson's had his problems with referees in this series. But this looks like a good night for him already. Look at the lead he's stretched. Oh, and Chris Louie, one last ditch attempt to pick up a point here, but he's not going to make it. Louie has to settle for fourth place very, very reluctantly. And look at that, an exultant Tony Rickardson, knowing that he's come back for some, uh, from some bad moments so far in the series. He lies in third place, having placed third and fourth in the last two rounds after that uh, disastrous opening round for him in the Czech Republic in May. So Rickardson takes a win. As ever, immaculately turned out. Tony Rickardson, 29 years old now, from Gritas in Sweden, riding a Jawa. Cleanly through the inside there. And those eyes are focused on only one place, and that's that shale in front of him, and he's going to make it his. All he wants ahead of him is clear track, and he's got it. Twice world champion, of course, looking for the hat-trick this year. If he goes on performing like this at Coventry tonight, then he could well be on his way to achieving it. Joe Screen there, tassels flying. Always makes him instantly recognisable. The 26-year-old eventually having to settle there for second place behind this man twice world champion Tony Rickardson he's as motivated as ever isn't he he's going to be a hard man to beat here at Coventry we move on to heat 15 on the inside Brian Karger of Denmark alongside him Stefan Dano of Sweden Lee Adams of Australia in white and Chris Louis once again the man on the outside in yellow who's going to take the start the blue corner has favoured the start so far oh Oh, and that was tight between blue and white, wasn't it? Dano and Adams, it's Adams who comes out on top. What a flyer he's got from the white lane. Lee Adams at the front. Can he hold on to it? Brian Carger charging through in his wake. And in yellow, Chris Louie getting things a little bit wrong there in that turn. And losing out to the man in blue, Stefan Dano. Dano, who's been accused of some wild riding tonight. He's tangled with Billy Hamill earlier and... Uh, as Billy put it in his uh, cool Californian way, Dano's riding like an idiot. He certainly was in that bend because he got right out in the deep stuff and lost third place to Brian Carger. Beg your pardon, lost third place to Chris Louie. So Louie is now through into third place, tackling Brian Carger. Looking for that second place. At the front, Lee Adams going once more for victory. And here he goes, Chris Louie goes for the inside, and Louie gets it! Louie gets it up the inside, Brian Carger loses out down the finishing straight. But it's Lee Adams, number 13, who's taken victory. Lee Adams, a 28-year-old Australian, takes the win, Chris Louie in second place.
Brian Carger third for Denmark and Stefan Dano, the man who's writing like an idiot. Well, according to some. And there's Brian Carger looking really dismayed with himself. Having lost it up the finishing straight, he lost that second place to hard-charging Chris Louis. This was the start. And that was very tight between the, red, the white and blue corners. And in, and in the end, it was the, the man in blue, initially Stefan Dano, who lost out. The man in red, Brian Carger, benefits. And the ultimate winner, number 13, Lee Adams in white. Tremendous slow-mo action again here at Coventry. And here we have the moment that is this the, is this the finishing straight? We look down the finishing straight now. Oh, and look at that! And that's what happened to Brian Carger. Whether he had an engine problem or not as he went into the finishing straight, I don't know, but he ended up walloping the fence. And that cost him his speed. He lost out to Chris Louis in the run into the line. Welcome back to Coventry and round four of the World Speedway Championship 1999, the British Grand Prix. Well, Heat 18 went to Tony Rickardson. A terrific victory ahead of uh, the wonderful Hans Nielsen, who sliced like a, a hot knife through butter between Jimmy Nielsen and Ryan Sullivan to take second place. Heat 19, that went to Thomas Golob. But Mark Loram sensationally lost out by inches to Lee Adams as they fled across the finishing line and he went out. Thomas Golub having machine problems. He swapped bikes before this first semi-final. Which brings him up against Greg Hancock in blue, Hans Nielsen in red and Joel Screen in yellow. So Golov not enjoying the best of nights. Messing up uh, first turns, not happy with his equipment, suffering some machine problems, deciding to swap bikes just before he comes out for this first semi-final. Remember, the first and second guys through, they go direct to the A final, the other guys have got to uh, make do with the consolation final. The Coventry Totty marches out with the 50s and second board. And we wait to see eagerly what's going to happen. Hans Nielsen, Greg Hancock, Thomas Golob, Joe Screen. And look at that. 45% of those hole shots have come out of the blue gate. The one that contains Greg Hancock, the 1997 world champion. Oh, and he went early. Thomas Golob went a fraction early, had to back off. And that cost him dear. Because it's Hancock up the inside, outside him in red, Hans Nielsen. Two of them, both of them, of course, former champions. They are the men in first and second places. And it's Thomas Gollum and Joe Screen who've got the work to do. Screen going wide in yellow. Gollum desperately trying to come up the inside. But all he's doing is messing around with Joe Screen. And in fact, he's lost out to Screen. He got too wide. Screen went round the outside of him. And again, this time, Tuck's inside. As, and Thomas Golob, he's a wild boy, isn't he? That great sort of leggy Anders Mishinek style gets him into some trouble. It looks great when he's winning. It looks untidy when he's not. And at the moment, the guys who are doing the winning are the, the blue of Greg Hancock, the red of Hans Nielsen. And Thomas Golob looks to be going into the consolation final here. A long a look at that. He's already waving to his fans. Greg Hancock says, thank you very much. I'll take the A final and the possibility of winning here at Coventry in front of my home fans to whom he lobs a few kisses there's an American flag or two flying out there Thomas Golob is uh, extremely miffed you might say not impressed with that at all so he leaves his number two bike or is it his number 22 bike we don't know how many he's got with him and he marches off the gaunt handsome Paul not hands happy with that at all and look at this he went he stopped, he went again. And that split second cost him the momentum that could have taken him to the front. Then uh, the front wheel poured the air to cost him a bit more time. And inside him, it was Hans Nielsen. 
the wily old warhorse gets a bit wide. Greg Hancock just takes a look at Hans Nielsen and says, thank you very much, I'll take the inside line. And look at that. Hans Nielsen's penchant for training on a motocross bike gets the better of him for a moment. He slings out a wild American supercross leg and uh, indicates to Greg Hancock that he can have the inside line. And this man, Tomasz Golov, not happy at all, but he's got to go to the consolation final, which of course means he can still finish fifth and pick up a reasonable hatful of points here, though it's not nearly as many as he would have liked. He's going to lose out to somebody in the point standings. And here he is, Tomasz Golov, number three, from Bidgoch, where the last round is to be held, of course, in Poland. 28 years old now, rides a Jawa, sponsored, of course, by uh, Lech, the premier beer that sponsors the whole of this championship series but uh, it hasn't helped them at all in this outing here in Coventry and he's got a gold into the consolation final along with number 19 Joe Screen oh and that he did get out of shape didn't he he's got an amazing ability to hang on to it when his head's virtually touching the deck on the inside but it didn't do him a lot of good so semi-final two and already looking a red-hot favourite he's won all his races so far with almost consummate ease against this opposition and this is the man doing the gardening on the red in the red lane he likes to be on the inside Tony Rickardson defending champion 29 year old Swede alongside him in blue Jason Crump the man in white is Lee Adams and the man in yellow and black is Chris Louie. So two Australians, an Englishman and a Swede. Well, an Englishman who was actually born in Bristol, but there we go, we still count him as Australian. Now that blue corner that Crump is in has certainly seen the best of the whole shot so far as, uh, as the circus pony comes trotting out once again with the 15 second board up on the inside lane there. Tony Rickardson, he's been getting devastating hole shots so far tonight. And really, unless anyone could beat him into the first turn, it's difficult to see who's going to beat him at all. Some great close-ups here. Oh, and then back wheels biting, and it's that man Rickardson again. No one's got near him. He's cleaned out in front of Jason Crump. Crump wheelies his way to the outside to cut off Chris Louie. He realised he'd have to do that. Because if Louis got... Oh, and look at that, coming up the inside there in white, Lee Adams. in all sorts of a mess in blue there Jason Crump gets himself completely tied in knots Chris Louis says thank you very much and takes advantage of his mistake and the Englishman's through into second place Chris Louis number five from Ipswich 30 years old just three weeks before this event rides for Ipswich of course has never actually won a world final a Grand Prix he's finished second in Sweden and Denmark twice runner-up last year could this be his night number five Chris Louis he's lying a strong second behind that man Rickardson but someone is going to have to beat Tony Rickardson out of the traps to beat him in a race so Jason Crump and Lee Adams are consigned to the consolation final Tony Rickardson has won once again Swedish flags are flying and a very very happy Chris Louis says thank you very much you British fans I'm in there in the final Rickardson, Louis, go into the A-final, Crump and Adams. Of course, if you go into the A-final, you've got that uh, possible packet of 25 points to pick up. And uh, for Chris Louis, who's down in 15th place, with just 19 points on his scorecard so far, so far, he'd like to notch up those points. But so, of course, with this man, Tony Rickardson, he's on 41 points at the moment. He's 24 points behind Tomasz Golov. Well, he knows that Golov's having a second-rate evening, so he's got to take advantage of it. And those Swedish eyes look as if they might. The double world champion is confident, isn't he? Rickardson won his first championship in 1994. Since when he's seen Hans Nielsen win it, Billy Hamill, Greg Hancock, and then he retaliated himself in 1998. Hans Nielsen, of course, won his first title back in about, ooh, 1986, was it? 1987, he won again, 1989. A third time, 1994-95, was his fourth championship. 
across the running walls the most. I think is Ivan Major, the New Zealander, the legendary New Zealander, who was always an amazingly tidy rider, took six world titles. Well, we don't know who's going to take it this year, but this man on the form that he's showing, Tony Rickardson, when we thought after the bad first round he had in the Czech Republic, when he had uh, something of a contretemps with the referee there, we thought he might be down and out of this series. He certainly isn't. He's well into it. He's well in it, uh, in control of things tonight. This man, Chris Louis, could he do anything to beat the Swede in the final? We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back to see how Rickardson and Louis go on in the final. Night has fallen on a beautiful summer evening here in Coventry. 15 second board is shown by the spectacular lady in the uh, pink plumage. I wonder if all the ladies in Coventry dress like that. And we've got the consolation final. Lee Adams on the inside, the 28-year-old Australian. Jason Crump, the 23-year-old Australian inside him. Joe Screen of England in white. And Thomas Gollop in the yellow helmet on the outside. And Gollop gets a bad start from the outside. But it's the red of Lee Adams at the front. Quickly eclipsed by the blue of Jason Crump. Round the outside. The white of Joe Screen, but Thomas Gollop's gone. Thomas Gollop's pulled out already. He's holding his hand up in disbelief. The race appears to be going on. Gollop doesn't agree with it, but the race is going on. Oh, this is a disaster. One, the evening couldn't have... You wouldn't have thought the evening could get worse for the uh, leader of the 1999 World Series, but it looks like it just has. Gollop uh, registering his protestations while at the front in blue, the man who's looking as if, he's, as if he's heading for maximum points from the consolation final is Jason Crump. The man pressing him in red, Lee Adams. So it's Australians one and two with Joe Screen tailing in white. At least he's not tailing as badly as the man in yellow and black. A distraught Thomas Gollum. But look at this. Lee Adams is pressing hard. Oh, he didn't get the grip he wanted there though. He's lost a bit of ground. He'll really need to pile on the coals into the final turn. Goes for the outside line, Crump knows he's there, glances over his right shoulder, knows that he's got the drive he needs, he wins it second place, if this stands of course. Goes to Lee Adams. Thomas Gollop marches straight across to have a word with his manager and say, excuse me, there's something was, he was very unhappy about something. Moving his hand as if either someone was gabbling at him or something was flashing, but Thomas Gollop, not a happy man. Uh, who, who is it? Uh, referee, Thomas Gollum's representative would like to speak to you, please. If you just hold on a second, I'll just get the referee for you. OK. He's going to get the referee for you. Yeah. Mayhem. Referee. Right, just speak to Thomas, please. Yeah. Excuse me, this is Thomas's manager. Listen, there was a red light on coming on uh, into, gate, into turn three. The yellow lights were flashing. The yellow light was on. And that's why he shut off. Uh, Thomas. Yes. The uh, flashing red lamp didn't work. You couldn't see any red flags. The flashing red light didn't work. Yeah, it, 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 was, it was flashing for, all over the track. It was for some uh, seconds when the flashing yellow lamp worked. Yeah, well, the yellow but, was on, that's what not, I'm saying. Not, not uh, the red light and you couldn't see any red flags. Sorry. Not, the red light was on, it was flashing, the yellow no, light was flashing. No, no, yellow, not the red. The yeah, yellow. Yeah, the yellow light was flashing. Yellow for some seconds without any flags and without voice. It wasn't stop the heat. Oh, sorry. But if you, want, flag. if you want, if you want to protest, oh, wow. if you want to protest, uh, could you talk to the clerk of the course, please? If you Mr. want to Mr. protest, Mr. you can do it, Thomas. This the van. This the van. Yeah. It's Graham Ray. The yellow lights came on during the race. Yeah. That's why he stopped. Yeah, I, I know it, but it was the yellow light and not the red light. There wasn't any red flags. But if the rider wanted to look at the snow wall here on the replay, and there's the yellow light. The yellow light comes on on the top right of our screen, proving Thomas Gollop's point that the the the, the, uh, the yellow light did come on to distract him. That referee, East Van Derago, he's a Hungarian. He was strongly criticised for for his allegedly inept handling of the recent Intercontinental Final at Poole. Only runs about four major FIM meetings a year, and uh, Thomas Gollop not happy with him. And I think quite a few people might uh, sympathise with the poll on that one.
So, Thomas Gollop has to settle for fourth place after that animated discussion with referee Istvan Durago. Let's hope we don't see too much of him for the rest of this year. 48% of starts have been made from gate two, but I suspect that Tony Rickardson for this final, this critical final, is happy to go with his favorite red slot. And he has indeed chosen lane one. He's chosen lane one. Rickardson goes for lane one. I can't imagine that Hancock will go for anything but lane two, and he does. The blue lane for him. Which means that Chris Louie has the choice of either white or yellow. Here he is having a quick dig at things to see what he thinks. Chris Louie, 30 years old now. And the Suffolk man goes for the third lane, which means that uh, Heinz Nielsen comically holding up the yellow one as if to say I've chosen that boy so 39 year old Nielsen four times world champion and uh, claiming to be in his last year of world title competition with that beautiful custard yellow Arai helmet on the left of your picture Chris Louis inside him Greg Hancock from the favoured lane 48 percent of hole shots from that blue lane and he's also put on a sparkling new yellow Coventry Bees black and white black and yellow outfit for the start of this final can he make the hole shot but no Rickardson once again doesn't make it in fact Hans Hancock is struggling to hang on in same place he's got it but the man in white Chris Louis is pressing him hard oh and look at Louis go underneath got a tremendous drive from the apex of that second bend Louis takes second place ahead of Greg Hancock the 97 champ and the man tailing in fourth place is that four times world champ Hans Nielsen but how many people are doing things like this when they're knocking on 40 in first place then Rick Hudson. Second place in white, Chris Louie. Third in blue, Greg Hancock. The local Coventry Bees man, and behind him, Hans Nielsen. But I can't see anyone beating Rick Hudson. If he gets 25 points here, he's going to colossally close the gap at the top of that championship standing on Tomasz Golob. In fact, he's going to break through into second place anyway, ahead of Jimmy Nielsen, his compatriot. And fist aloft, Tony Rickardson wins it, second for Chris Louis, equaling his best ever Grand Prix result in Scandinavia last year, in, in Denmark and in Sweden. And there's the boys in the Chris Louis t-shirts, waving on their hero, the man in blue, um, as, as ever a sporting contender, Greg Hancock pushed down into third place out of that favoured blue lane. Hans Nielsen in fourth place. He'll still come away with 16 points, which will improve his standing a little because uh, he's pretty far down at the moment. He's scored lowly in all three rounds, 17 points. And look at this, a little Swedish lady with her Tony banner. Her Tony banner and no teeth. Waving her friends up to uh, cheer on their hero, Tony Rickardson. And look at this, the guys did their best, didn't they, out of that gate. Look at Chris Louie, front wheel pouring the air, but the man coming in from the right-hand side of the screen what terrific equipment he's on, the drive that he's getting, and Greg Hancock loses it there and then when he gets absolutely wastefully broadside. Loses forward momentum, and Chris Louis creeping up the in, creeping up the inside already. But Tony Rickardson is the man. Rickardson gets to the front, stays at the front. I beg Grant, Greg Hancock's pardon, he's still in second place there on the Exide Batteries bike but he's fighting it all the way and again he overslides into the second turn on his home track and there we have a classic Stefan Chambon feet on the saddle wheelie from Tony Rickardson he's the victor and that puts him up to 66 points second in the table to Tomasz Golub 75 past Jimmy Nilsson in third on 64 Jason Crump he is in fourth place on 52 points Greg Hancock still in for a sniff with a sniff he's got 49 points in fifth place Sixth place, the wayward Stefan Dano on 45. Seventh, Joe Screen, he's got 44 points. Eighth, joint eighth now, Chris Louis and Lee Adams on 39 points apiece. And a joint tenth place for uh, Tony Casper and that man, Mark Loram, on 35 points. And just behind them, two points are Stern, having finished fourth in that final, the four-time world champion Hans Nielsen in 12th place in the championship standings right now. Oh, well, we've seen some great action here at Coventry. Tony Rickardson takes the win. 
There's one of the, there's the offending yellow light that uh, caused such controversy here. Well, if that referee can uh, accidentally hit the yellow light button, he's not really fit to be in charge of a contest at this high level of the sport. But anyway, Tony Rigardson won't be worried about that tonight. He's taken the win ahead of Chris Louie and Greg Hancock. Hans Nielsen fourth, Jason Crump fifth, Lee Adams sixth, Joe Screen seventh, Tomasz Golab in eighth place. There's Rickardson's sp splendid celebration. And he knows that if he wins the last two rounds, which are, of course, in Poland and Denmark, he can win this championship once again. I'm Jack Bernicle. Thanks for your company. See you again soon. Welcome to round five of the Lex Speedway Grand Prix Series of 1999 and the unusual and intriguing sight of a large white boat drifting onto the track here at Bydgoszcz in Poland where Tomasz Golob has attracted 20,000 raving Polish fans to see him take on defending champion Tony Rickardson as well as all the rest of these guys in their blistering battle for honours this year. This is, of course, the second occasion on which we visited Poland. We were here back at the beginning of June, and there is just one more round to go at Vosjens in Denmark on September the 25th. Thomas Golab, at the moment, leads the World Championship standings. He's the most popular sportsman in Poland, and that's why all these people have turned, down to, have turned out to see him. Here are the guys enjoying a ride with a, a beautiful young woman guiding the ship around. And... Uh, the professorial uh, Mr. Carlson there in his spectacles. There's Brian Carger, the Dane, flapping his little flag. There's several Union Jacks there in the hands of uh, the likes of Mark Loram and Andy Smith. Thomas Golub, 75 points. Nine point lead on Tony Rickardson, the defending champion. Jimmy Nilsson in third place with 64. Jason Crump on 52. Greg Hancock on 49 everything to play for this is the professor getting ready for heat one peter carlson of sweden wears the pro professorial spectacles underneath his uh, visor of course and he'll be taking on jimmy nilsson henker gustafsson and uh, the newly crowned young man of polish speedway the newly crowned polish champion in fact uh, peter protasevich He'll be riding in yellow, and there he is, Protasevich, the newly crowned Polish champion, 1999. What can he make of things in front of uh, a crowd that's ostensibly come to see his, uh, his elder statesman in Poland? In red, we've got Jimmy Nielsen, the number two for last year, and currently just two points behind Rickardson in the championship chase. So an important night for Jimmy Nielsen. In white, we've got Henker Gustafsson. Gustafsson at the moment is down in 18th place, just 18 points in the championship series so far, so he's way outside the automatic qualifiers for next year. So all these, most of these guys are facing very important nights here in Poland. That's the number two machine of Jimmy Nilsson, a 32-year-old on the jar with a man from Stockholm in Sweden. He's on the inside gate. Carlson alongside him, that's Peter Carlson, Henke Gustafsson, and uh, Protasevich on the outside in the yellow gate. Now this track has been scraped clear. There's a huge amount of sludge been taken on the top of it, off the top of it. You could see it all there, lining the infield, because it had been so wet the place was flooded on the Friday night. They've scraped it off on the morning of the racing, and here we are Saturday evening. It's all action, and that cheer is for Peter Protasevich making a break round the outside of Peter Carlson. Glancing across at Carlson and then leaning on him heavily as they're going to lap two. And at the front, Henke Gustafsson's leading. The blue helmet of Peter Carlson hanging on there. What can Petrasevic do about this? Can he start the crowd off with a, a good wild first heat and grab that second place? Peter Carlson's not there, though. Peter Carlson, if anything, is moving away. He's beginning to challenge it. Petrasevic has gone down. Petrasevic goes down a little bit over eager. 
So the newly crowned Polish champion is out of it. And the leg trailing the man in charge. The neater, tidier style of Peter Carlson gunning him down, but not fast enough. Henke Gustafsson takes heat one. Peter Carlson finishes in second place. Third place for Jimmy Nielsen. So not a good start from Jimmy Nielsen, who's uh, obviously hoping to, to keep up the pressure at the top of the table, where he's just that tantalising two points behind Tony Rickardson. And uh, Peter Potrasevich not starting as he'd like. And this is the red helmet of Jimmy Nilsson coming off the start. He made a good enough start, but it didn't really uh, work out for him after that. Tried to tuck in on the inside, didn't find the space that he wanted. Through the first turn then, Jimmy Nilsson, runner-up in the gym. Look, he's really having to back off. Couldn't find any space at all. Winds the power back on, and by that time, he'd completely lost contact with the boys at the front. But look at Petrasevich. There was no lack of power there. He just kept it wound on till the whole plot went down. And look at those hands being held to faces in the background. Heat two brings together Ryan Sullivan on the inside. Stefan Dano, number 17 in blue. Antonin Kasper in white. And not Tomas Golob in yellow, but Jacek Golob, a kid brother Golob. So yet another potential Polish hero makes his appearance here tonight in Heat 2. What's Jacek Golob like? We'll soon find out. Ryan Sullivan, number seven, has uh, the favourite spot on the inside. Can the Australian take advantage of it? Oh, and he really gets a... <laughs> A footin' tootin' start rips up, but someone's gone down. And we've lost the yellow of Jacek. It's Jacek Golub. Golub's gone down. The race will have to be red flagged. It is because he's stuck there on the outside of the first turn. Jacek Golub looking, um, and here he is coming off the line. Let's see what happened to him. He certainly got a good initial gait, but they got squeezed out by the uh, triumvirate in front of him, inside of him, and he went down completely on his own. Just gassed it a bit too hard, got a little bit too sideways, and um, fortunately, by the time he hit that fence, he wasn't going too fast. These fences, of course, are, um, well, according to Billy Hamill, who suffered a, a, a very unpleasant back injury here a year ago, this the fence here is pretty dangerous compared to uh, the sort of protective fences they have in Sweden. Let's hope that, uh, that Jacek Golob is okay. Another look at it. And it was uh, the man who came out wide was the, the blue helmet at Stefan Dano. And it sort of uh, put off the younger Golob. Here's Tomas Golob offering a bit of advice to kid brother as he picks him up and uh, brings him back to the pits. It's all right, kid, you can go. And they've let him out again. Well, there you are. It's a Polish star. We're in Poland. So they've turned a blind eye to the fact that uh, Jacek Golub caused that race to be stopped. And um, I'm glad to say he's back on track again. He's there in the yellow lane on the outside, taking on Sullivan, Dano and Kasper. Ryan Sullivan, the 24-year-old from Fitzroy in Australia, gates again well from the inside, slings it on the tight line. Everybody else survives, although the younger Golob, oh, we, I was going to say, squeezed out into fourth place, but he keeps the power on very bravely and outguns Antonin Kasper back in the white helmet there. A quick glance over the left shoulder from Stefan Dano. Stefan Dano, number 17, holding on there nicely in second place. Ooh, I was really saying, holding on nicely, getting a nasty head shake out of turn two there. Stefan Dano, the 30-year-old from Sweden. Hanging on in front of uh, the much-tooted Golob, the younger Golob. I think he's picked up some style hints from big brother Thomas. He's certainly got that, uh, that upright leg-trailing full-bore attack that Thomas Golob always displays. Uh, but I think Stefan Dano's got him under control. A quick glance over his shoulder once again, and he knows that he's going to rip across the line in second place. Just a Golub third. But the man who's won it was the man in red, Ryan Sullivan, and he's pleased with that. A great, a perfect hole shot, and just held things together at the front. So the former Australian under-16 champion takes victory in heat two. Didn't leave Australia until 1994 when he joined the British Division 2 club Peterborough. 
He was the overseas champ in 1995 and the, the intercontinental champion in 1997. So Ryan Sullivan beginning to show the sort of form that he sprang on Europe when he first came over here. Great start. He held it so tight he forced everybody else way out wide on this uh, rather rough and bumpy track that's been scraped of all the sludge that gathered on it on Friday night. Poland, round five of the Lech Speedway Grand Prix Series and we're on to heat 10. The man in red on the inside is Jacek Golub. The man in, white, in yellow on the outside there is the 32-year-old Dane Brian Karga. In between them, in blue, we've got Jimmy Nilsson. And in white, Peter Carlson. Peter Carlson, the elder of the two brothers, 29-year-old. And this is a very, very crucial heat. Third and fourth will be eliminated for the rest, from the rest of the evening's proceedings and have to slink off home with just four points to show for their efforts. So Golub, Nilsson, Carlson, Karga, Poland, Sweden, Sweden and Denmark. Twenty thousand thousand people packed into this fine stadium. Eyes left or right. Oh, and Karga's Karga's engines launched itself on the line. Oh, what bad luck! And this, the Dane gets pushed off. Oh, and after a brilliant start initially from Peter Carlson, he suddenly loses traction completely, and he finds that Jacek Golub and Jimmy Nilsson are ahead of him, and the crowd are delighted because Golub's leading. Well, it looks like if uh, Thomas Golub isn't going to bring on the cookies, cookies for them, perhaps his kid brother can. But that battle for second place is going to hot up and it's going to be a critical one. Jimmy Nilsson versus Peter Carlson, the two Swedes. One of them is going to be eliminated from the evening's proceedings as from the end of this heat. Jimmy Nilsson, runner-up in the World Championship last year. Oh, and Carlson's coming at him, coming at him, coming at him. Carlson, who won the first of his Swedish national championships as a teenager, as a 19-year-old. Best placing of sixth in the World Championship back in 1996. And he's coming! The 29-year-old Swede closing on his compatriot. Takes a look up the inside as they go for the line. And I think he got it. I think he got it by the width of a wheel. So Jimmy Nilsson. Oh, Jimmy Nilsson, I think, has gone out. And listen to the reception for Jacek Kolob. These 20,000 devoted fans have come to see the Golobs in action. And uh, this, this Golob has just gobbled up heat 10. I think they're rather pleased. And Carlson did indeed snatch that vital second place. He goes through and poured Jimmy Nilsson, who was in a strong third place in the championship. As we watch Golob's terrific getaway. And Nilsson initially front wheel pouring the air had got a good drive out of the gate. But Nilsson eliminated by a wheel. He gets 17th place, only four points, which really, realistically, will cost him his championship chance. Look at those wild eyes of the younger Golub coming around the outside. Completely different colouring from his big brother, but uh, equally dramatic. And, uh, wow, great bike control. And Jimmy Nilsson, if he just made it to the front there, he might have been all right. He just had to back off a fraction so as to avoid the rear wheel of the young Paul. And eventually he didn't quite make it to the finish line in time. Oh, and Brian Carger, there was a telltale puff of smoke from the exhaust system then, and I think that was a broken engine. Peter Carlson tried to make it up the inside. That was a really, uh, really terrific piece of hairy riding from the three of them. And I think this might be the closing stages. Look at Carlson getting the power down, getting through the inside, up the inside line, and squeezing his way out and finally making it through as Jacek Golob takes first place in front of the two Swedes. Once again, look at that puff of smoke up the, the rear end of that uh, Brian Karga Jawa. The man from Horsens in Denmark looks in disbelief at his stricken machine. And that means Jimmy Nielsen is stuck on 68 points. That is a real blow to his championship chances. Up until now, he was right in there in contention. He's now going to have to uh, go to Denmark with a less than realistic chance. And those are the guys who go out at this stage in proceedings, including, of course, Brian Karga and Andy Smith. Now, Tomasz Golop, 
Heat 11, this is a critical one. Tony Rickardson, the defending champion, takes on Golob, Stefan Dano and the 1996 world champion, Billy Hamill. And there's Hamill in the background there in the yellow helmet. Now he's got his own particular gremlins to deal with here on the return to the track at which he suffered such uh, an awful injury, crushed vertebrae in his back after a collision with Jason Crump at this Polish Grand Prix last year. So the lovely smiling man from California who's had a tough year. And this is the man in white, Stefan Dano. Billy Hamill says he doesn't really like this track. He does think it's a bit dangerous. The fencing, he says, is dangerous. It's a poor standard compared to the, the fencing in Sweden, where he has moved, of course, with wife Christina and children Margaret and Curtis. And they are happily settled there. Here comes the red helmeted Swede, Tony Rickardson. And fettling things there, his Canadian tuner and mechanic, Carl Blomfeldt. And this, the lineup for a tremendous build up to Heat 11. The World Championship now, especially with the demise of Jimmy Nielsen, really is realistically between the man in the blue helmet, Tomasz Golob, the local hero, and the man in the red helmet, Tony Rickardson. Stefan Dano, number 17, the 30 year old on the GM from Ostersund in Sweden. Tomasz Golob, the 28 year old on whose hometown is right here in Bidgosh. And just listen to the reception he gets when he emerges onto the track. <laughs> it's the French Revolution all over again. The Polish Revolution. Look at this. Great to see the, him inspiring uh, such a riotous response from the crowd. But this is the man that they fear. He really is on tremendous form. In fact, Thomas Golub himself says that really, Tony and I have left the others behind, and, but he feels that Tony is riding better than he is. That's Thomas Golub in blue, number three, speaking. He says that, uh, oh, and there's a bit of clutch adjustment going on here to Rickardson's bike. Just backing that clutch off slightly. He doesn't want the clutch to be quite as snappy as it has been just ease it back slightly so he gets a gentler feed in of the uh, lethal power from this methanol burning monster so Tony Rickardson defending champion twice world champion from Kritas in Sweden 29 year old riding Jawa He of course is, the, he was, uh, incidentally, he's just been crowned Swedish champion at Norskopping. So things going very well for Tony Rickardson. He's on top form, he's probably winning the psychological battle with Tomasz Golub as he begins to close him down in the championship series. Golub says, maybe my engines are not good enough, maybe I've lost a bit of confidence, maybe even the image of, being, of not being world champion is influencing me in the wrong way. Rickardson, lane one, Golob alongside him. Hamill on that outside gate in which there have been zero percent of hole shots. That must be a disheartening one to be in, especially on his return to this, uh, his, the, the track that hurt him. That, oh, and there's an awful pile of which Billy completely escapes. Oh, how did you manage that, boys? Rickardson's gone down, taken Golob with him. How did they manage that? It's heads down, they're completely focused on the front, but the and it's definitely Rickardson and Golub who touch, and they take out the white helmet and Stefan Dano. A nasty little pile up there. Here we see it from the back. That's the left elbow. Oh, and they and that was a tremendous collision, awful collision as they were reaching the first turn. Golub leaning right on top of Tony Rickardson on the inside line. I think he's hurt his leg. Golob definitely not feeling too comfortable there. He didn't reach the fence. Here we see it from the head. And look how far right Rickardson goes. As, and then as he goes right, Golob comes left and the collision becomes inevitable. A pure racing accident. And uh, Tony Rickardson sportingly was the first man across to see how Tomasz Golob was. Just like Golob, his younger brother, is there as well. Checking his brother out. And at the moment it's not looking terribly good. The doctor's there. He's looking a bit less than comfortable. Here comes the ambulance concerned whistling from the crowd I hope they're not blaming Tony Rickardson for that 
And look at the start that Billy Hamill got, lifting that front wheel halfway down the start straight and being completely clear of all the brother, the bother. Another look from the inside, that was a heavy collision. It completely tucked in the front wheel of Tony Rickardson's there as he went down. And he was so completely focused on that first turn, but at the time he was focused on it, he was drifting far to the right, and uh, Golob came in. But Golob is fit to do the restart. The rerun will feature Thomas Golob. A bit tender in the knee and with a bit of a, a, a swollen elbow, but he's come back for the restart. Hamill on the outside. The American former champion, Tony Rickardson on the inside, the defending champion, Thomas Golob, the man who would be king. 1973, the last time that the Poles had a world champion, and Tomasz Golob, so near yet so far, this the penultimate round of the series. The restart then to Heat 11. And almost a nervous Golob went for the jump and then didn't. He could have snapped the tapes then, but he can't quite make... Oh, and look at that, that grip that the red helmet of Tony Rickardson found then. He wasn't expecting that, was he? Flung the front wheel up, but he's driven straight back underneath Thomas Golob. Waste no time. Golob retaliates right across the white line, just to say misses the back wheel of Tony Rickardson's machine. So Golob at the moment is being outwitted on his home track. A track that really the home fans were expecting him to win round. So Rickardson, Rickardson leads, Golob in second place. The white helmet and Stefan Dano third and Billy Hamill trailing in fourth place. Around a track that he really doesn't like. He points out also, of course, that uh, Per Jonsson was badly injured here five years ago. And he thinks those fences could be improved. But at least everybody survived the, uh, the crash that they all had at the beginning of this heat. And here on the rerun, the winner is Tony Rickardson. Second plate for Thomas Golov. Third place, Stefan Dano, and fourth place for Billy Hamill. Rickardson tries to unfurl a, a, a rather reluctant checkered flag there. And a mixed reception here. I would have thought, I'd like the Polish fans to at least applaud Tony Rickardson. I don't like it very much when you get these deafening whistles. And all you're going to do in the end is fire the man up to go even better. You usually find that with champions. Give them the support, they love it. And if you don't give them the support, they love it even more. And that's um, that's an exaggerated inside leg. Look at that Anders Mishinek style on Tomasz Golob. Wow, he can't half hang it out, can't he? And as he comes out of here, just wait for the grip. Look at that, Rickardson. Where did he find that from? And Golob, well, he doesn't mind hanging that inside leg out, does he? Saying, that's my line, thank you very much. Plants the inside leg down. But in the, in the end, it's not enough because Rickardson's holding a more disciplined line and he gets the drive out of that second turn and gets himself back in front. Brilliant riding from the Swede. Golob is definitely not able to live with him at the moment. Despite that tremendous, aggressive style, he's taking up, using up too much track and not keeping up a high enough pace. So Thomas Golub losing a critical, a psychologically critical 11th heat. But watch this moment at which we go. <laughs> and this track is definitely unpredictable. You can say from having all that sludge scraped off it, you never quite know where you're, where you're going to find the grip. It's quite rutted. It's got a few, a few uh, potholes in it. Thomas Golub streaked bravely through that gap, didn't he? Heat 14 brings together our first glimpse of the... Hans Nielsen, the four times world champion, the 39-year-old veteran Dane on the inside, and a clean hole shot. Perfect hole shot. Hans Nielsen, oh, and coming up the inside then was Jasha Golob. But in fact, he's got passed around the outside by Jason Krupp. No, he retaliates. Krupp comes back underneath. Wow. Come on, boys, give it some stick. Golob looks up the inside again. He's finding the lines his brother's struggling to find. Great riding by the man in white. And it's Michael Carson who's being trailed off at the back. But Hans Nielsen, the polished ultimate professional, number four Hans Nielsen, world champion in 1986, 1987, 1989 and 1995.
Well, I don't think he's got the chance to be world champion again this year, but he's going to give people something to remember him by in what he threatens is going to be his final season. Well, Hans, I'll believe that when you finally hang up those immaculate black leathers and those sparkling RI helmets. But right now, he's going to win this one. He wins it. Second place, Jacek Golov, rapidly becoming uh, as much of a hero as his big brother. And he's pleased with that, isn't he? Congratulates the, uh, the legend who's just beaten him. And third place goes to Jason Crump. Jason Cook riding number eight. 24-year-old from who was actually originally born in Bristol, although he is, of course, Australian. World under-21 champ back in 1995. The same year that Hans Nielsen, your winner in red, took his fourth world title. Bah, he looks as sharp as ever, doesn't he? At 39, approaching 40. Hans Nielsen. In fact, December this year, Boxing Day, Boxing Day this year, Hans Nielsen will turn 40. You wouldn't think it the way he's riding that motorcycle. And look at this battle that was going on between Jason Crump and Jacek Gollop. I think Gollop couldn't quite believe the speed at which Jason Crump went past there, so he, he gathers himself up, storms across the uh, bows of the Australian, and then finds him tucking inside him. Look at that leg trip, pure pre-war technique from this boy, Jacek Golub. He's obviously uh, been born a couple of generations too late, hasn't he? But he hangs on in there for a very, very brave second place in front of his home crowd. It's only one man we haven't seen yet, is Mark Laura. Mark Laura, the British champion, uh, has actually come in as a wildcard substitute for Marianne Giro. And the fastest heat time so far has been set by Mark Loram. One minute, 1.7 seconds ahead of Ryan Sullivan. And Mark Loram's got the fastest time, the third fastest time. And Andy Smith, sadly, uh, no longer with us this evening, is the fourth fastest heat time. OK, we move on to heat 18. And the man in yellow on the outside is Greg Hancock, our first glimpse of the former champion, Greg Hancock, 1997 world title winner. Inside him, Tomasz Golob, Hans Nielsen in blue, Ryan Sullivan in red, and incidentally, uh, Stefan Dano, he blew an engine on the start line in heat 15, he's been eliminated. Tomasz Golob is uh, suffering from a bit of fluid on his right knee and that swollen elbow, so he's, he's suffering some discomfort after his, uh, his major crash in the crucial heat 11. And that, uh, that delightful gymnastic schoolgirl comes on with her 15-second board. Still 0% from that outside gate. 47%, so a, a healthy percentage of uh, hold shots from that red gate. Can Ryan Sullivan do it again? He looks left. But Hans Nielsen comes out of the gate. Oh, so smart. Hans Nielsen, is he going to hold on to it down the back straight? Sullivan's got the inside line, but Nielsen's got the braver heart. He gets there first. Hans Nielsen up the inside. The man in yellow, Greg Hancock, manages to squeeze through to third place ahead of Thomas Golob. Golob struggling. The crowd silent. And the men at the front, look at Golob desperately trying to get round. Nielsen leads, second place Ryan Sullivan, third place in white, Thomas Golob has got through into third place ahead of Greg Hancock. But look how far out he's going into the dirt. Well actually there's no really thick dirt on this track because of the fact that it got so, had to be comprehensively scraped because it was so flooded out last night. Thomas Golub not finding his way round it as the crowd expects. And your winner is Hans Nielsen once again. He's on fine form. Second place Sullivan. Third place Golub the Elder. And uh, a less than thrilled reception from the crowd. Obviously their minds are set on only one person winning. And that person wasn't Hans Nielsen. Nielsen wins it. He goes to semi-final two. Sullivan semi-final one. Golub has to go to heat 20. Greg Hancock to heat 18. Sorry, Heat 90. This was Heat 18, we've just seen. And look at that. The Thomas Golob le leg is stuck out, this time by Hans Nielsen, to say, that's my line, you keep off it. 
Hancock going the long way round, but Nilsson's the man who's got the power down and eventually he simply outlasts Ryan Sullivan, doesn't he? Sullivan on the Jawa giving it everything, trying to squeeze inside. Doesn't quite make it. In fact, he got a bit of a fishtail. He lost him time as he came off, but Nilsson, Nilsson lost that outside foot peg as he came off the line. Still managed to hold a fairly tight line, while uh, Thomas Golub actually nearly made it up the inside, but he just didn't finally manage to get there. It would have been a tight squeeze, I think. These slow-mos are really something, aren't they? Thomas Golub there, the man who's... Uh, feeling that Tony Rickardson is honest enough to admit that Rickardson's riding better than he is at the moment and that's a big psychological barrier to overcome but look at that move look at the way he kept the power on bravely so courageously around the outside of Greg Hancock there wasn't really room for him to go through there but he went so the Polish hero isn't done yet as long as he's riding with that sort of force that sort of focus then he could still produce a result here in Bidgosh for his uh, absolutely adoring home fans 20,000 of them packed in here tonight that then was heat 18 these are the eliminated riders Jason Crump goes out Greg Hancock goes out we've lost Stefan Dana and the Carlsons and Billy Hamill but we'll be back for more action join us for the semis An ultimate round of the Lech Speedway Grand Prix Series 1999 a crucial event in deciding the outcome of the world championship and the defending champion on the inside number one tony rickardson this the man in white lee adams riding number 30 unlucky for some but perhaps not unlucky in australia the 28 year old australian and this is the man on the outside in yellow and black jasek golob he has got probably the least favored lane to line up in ryan sullivan in blue rickardson there on the inside world champion captain of kings lynn and swedish elite league club masana and of course just crowned swedish champion everything going for him at the moment confidence high can he get the whole shot oh and he's a, a wheel ahead of sullivan straight away out of the gate but look at that man in white what a great start initially from jasek from uh, lee adams Lee Adams is there, he's there in third place. But the man challenging Ryan Sullivan coming up underneath Tony Rickardson, not being overawed by the fact that he's a world champion, he's battling with then the 29-year-old Swede. He's in the lead. Oh, and finding that grip again. That front wheel pawing the air as he comes out of turn two. And at the moment, Jacek Golub is getting lost, lost off at the back of this semi. The man in the lead, in red, Tony Rickardson, defending champion. The man in blue, Ryan Sullivan. And the man challenging him in white and challenging hard is fellow Australian Lee Adams. But he can't quite make it. Lee Adams has to settle for third. And the whistles you would normally expect because Tony Rickardson's won and Jacek Golob has finished last. Well, one thing you can say about Poland, they've got some uh, great speedway stars. They've got a very decent football team as England have found to their cost. And uh, they don't like Tony Rickardson because he just might take that world championship for a third time and therefore deprive their ultimate hero, Tomasz Golob, of that uh, honor. That own brother's machine of the white helmet of Lee Adams. He got a good, a good lift out of the gate. And then when he realized he wasn't going to carry it into the first turn, he cleverly tucked in and made sure he had a, a potential sec. Look at that. He got right inside there and made sure he held on to third place as they came out. But Rickardson, look how bumpy that track is. Oh, and look at, look at Ryan Sullivan coming up the inside. He's riding very, very confidently, Ryan Sullivan. His second place at Bidgosh in the last meeting of 1998 was uh, his best personal performance to that, that stage in Grand Prix, so he obviously likes this track. Now then, semi-final two, Hans Nielsen, Mark Loram, Thomas Golob and Henke Gustafsson. Can Thomas Golob produce some improvement in form? Loram in as a wildcard replacement for Marianne Giro. What can he do about it? 
He's been riding well all night, despite the fact that his arms were rather tired earlier on in the evening. Oh, and look at that start from the yellow and black of Henger Gustafsson. What a terrific plant, but it's Hans Nielsen who's come across, right across to, to head the field from the inside, from the red hot inside berth. But the yellow and black of Henger Gustafsson has the blue riding, hard charging Mark Laurent. We know the British champion doesn't always make good starts, but he's great at coming from the back and look at him and attacking Gustafsson. And of course, you've got to attack Gustafsson hard because you want to get through into the main final, not just at the consolation final. Here comes Lorem getting the drive up the inside. Ooh, he has to back off at the last split second. But he's coming again. He's charging hard. He wants that second place. That second place would mean a British representative. Oh, what great riding from Lorem. Look at that. He's got the drive this time. He moves over. He squeezes out the Swede. And he squeezes it, and he holds that line and pushes him again. Has he got the drive? And he's got it there just. Whew. And that was, I beg your pardon, I've got that was Thomas Gollop all the way through there. I've had myself on the edge of the seat, and it was Thomas Gollop who was trying to get that, that uh, it was trying to hang on to that second place. Mark Loram finally squeezed him out. Thomas Gollop has lost out on being in the final. That is a blow to his championship chances. He's got to go to the consolation final. And the man whose arms were tired early in the evening, but who likes this rough, rutted track, and because he says he can choose his own lines and doesn't, uh, he doesn't like to have too much dirt on the track, that man in blue just squeezes across the line. Mark Loram snatches second play from Thomas Golob. And so Mark Loram goes to the final and Golob has to be content with the consolation final. What he likes about not having too much dirt on the track, Loram says, is that you can't be forced back by too much roost from the guys in front of you. Thomas Golob, he realises, look how cleverly he realises that he's lost it out of the gate, so he just cuts straight through and tries to squeeze up the inside. The man in white, Henker Gustafsson, is the one who really loses out there gets pushed right out look at that absolutely uh, full-on move from uh, the man in yellow Thomas Golob did he want that second place brilliant first lap from him you can see how unpredictable that track is when you get the slow mos and this was Golob holding on holding on holding on but look at Mark Loram glancing across at him as they go into the last lap and realising he hasn't got, quite got the drive to pick Thomas Golob off. So he's got to do it all again, and he did. Mark Loram proving that just because you're riding as a wild card doesn't mean that you're not going to be in there challenging for honours. Oh, what great riding from these two. The crowd desperate for Thomas Golob to go through. Well, what Golob has got to do now is win the consolation final because this was the moment at which he didn't make it to the to the final here at Bidgosh going for the line all his weight up the back on the back wheel not enough speed in the end to do it Poland the consternation final bringing together Lee Adams Tomasz Golob Jacek Golob and Henke Gustafsson Henke Gustafsson his best ever performance in the Grand Prix overall fifth place in 1996 he's in the unfavoured outside lane Tomasz Golob has got to try and take a full hat full of points from here He's got to do that to try and hold on to his championship lead. He's going for it round the outside in red Lee Adams, in blue Thomas Golub, and he finally outlasts, simply outgrips the Australian going into that first turn and then cuts back inside. A speciality of his, that sharp cut back in, but he goes awfully wide, gets the drive he needs right up against that fence and cuts through again into first place. Thomas Golub. He really does need to try and get this first place if he possibly can and the 15 vital points that go with it. That will take him on to 90 points in the championship. It could be enough to hold on to a lead in the championship depending what happens in the final. Thomas Golob then, 15 points maximum available to him. In third place in white is Kid Brother and tailing off at the moment Henke Gustafsson, well tailed off. At the front, Thomas Golob looking as if he can hang on in front of Lee Adams. And at least this will give the crowd something to go happy at home, happy about, and they do. They respond very uh, predictably to the fact that Thomas Golub has finally given them the win that they desired.
Yep, for them, that's the final tonight. Golub wins. Fifth place, 15 points, 90 points in the championship table. Lee Adams in second place. Lee Adams goes seventh in the table then with 53 points, just one point ahead of Joe Screen who was eliminated earlier this evening. And that's the blue helmet of Golub. Sticking that leg out in front of me. I love the way he just risks decapitation by someone's front wheel. This is where I intend to go. And then he just tucks it back in and winds the power on. A brave man indeed. Because all the time, Lee Adams, now this was really something. Who was going to have the sheer lion heart to hold that throttle on and keep and hold the line into the into that second turn? I thought that Lee Adams had it. I think that Lee probably thought he had it. But in the end, Thomas Golog just got there first and kept himself hung in. Now, this is the final. And this is possibly the man who could prevent Tony Rickardson winning. They've tossed a coin. They've had to toss a coin to decide who gets first choice of lane. And the man who does is Hans Nielsen, 39 years young, four times world champion. He's won a, at least one round of a Grand Prix every year that the Grand Prix have been held. The last four years, he hasn't won one yet in 1999. I'm sure he'll go for the inside lane. Mind you, he's been in green, great, in great starts, whether in red or blue, he goes for red. Hans Nielsen selects red. Now, I'd say that Tony Rickardson would go blue, but I've seen him make a completely um, dumbfounding choice of lane before now. He could even, I could even imagine him going for the yellow and black, but here we are. He's got his yellow hat on, but that's because he's Swedish, I think. Checking out the blue lane, I'm sh I would think that would be the favoured one. I can't see them going anything other than red, blue, yellow, uh, white and yellow, and he does indeed. Tony Rickardson, defending champion, knows that if he wins this final, he will be one point ahead of Thomas Golob going into the final round later this month in Denmark. Ryan Sullivan, surely to goodness, he's going to, he's going to elect to go with... Yes, you can tell by the expression on the face of that advisor that uh, the place to be is in lane three. And that means that the man stuck on the outside is none other than Mark Loram. OK, Mark, my boy, you can do it from out there. We've seen the sort of things, that, the sort of results that you can produce. So the British champion, the star of Pool and Moderna and uh, also an unpronounceable Polish team goes from the outside lane. But the man who gets the whole shot again is Hans Nielsen. Hans Nielsen goes through. He's a... Ahead of Tony Rickardson. Oh, but he's Rickardson's coming under pressure from the man in white. And that's Ryan Sullivan. But we've only got three men here. Mark Loram stopped. Oh, what a disaster for Mark Loram. After coming all this way and working his way through to the final, he retires early in the final. But look at Hans Nielsen. And look at the man in white, Ryan Sullivan, giving a really hard time to Tony Rickardson. And the crowd are loving this. They want to see Rickardson lose as many points as possible in this final. He goes for the inside and he gets second place. I don't think Sullivan can do anything about that. He, oh, he tries to come up the inside, but that clever Swede closes the door. Snaps the door closed. Now he's in pursuit of Hans Nielsen. Can he catch the legendary Dane? I don't think he can. I think he's going to not take the lead in this championship. He's going to have to settle for second place. That takes his championship total to 86 points. So to the joy of the crowd, Thomas Golob still holds the lead. And for once, they'll cheer Hans Nielsen because he's beaten the man they wanted to see beaten. Hans Nielsen suddenly covered in toilet paper with an egg, uh, holding aloft the checkered flag. Look at the reception he gets. He could be Polish. He's adopted Paul for the evening because he's beaten Rickardson. Hans Nielsen then is now joint fifth in the championship table with Greg Hancock on 58 points. He wins ahead of Tony Rickardson, Ryan Sullivan and a desperately unlucky Mark Loram. And Loram's problem, would you believe, was that the sort of central fuel rig that all the bikes get filled up in, in the middle of the paddock at Grand Prix didn't, fill his, didn't put enough methanol in his bike. He ran out of fuel. Well, what a cruel fate. And triumphant wheelie from Hans Nielsen. Hey, control that man. He's 39 years old. Speedway keeps you young, folks.
He rolled right into the arms of his supporters and team. And I think it's going to be... Uh, oh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Celebration time. One, two, three. Hans Nielsen becomes the only man to win a Grand Prix round in every year that the Grand Prix series has been going. Five years, and he's won each time. Look at the style of that. Doesn't he look confident? It's like the years have been unrolled. We're back in the middle 80s. We're back, I'm back out riding with on his 250 Yamaha motocross or watching him ride round in the Midlands on his 250 Yamaha motocrosser in those days before he became a world champion. Always a very quiet and uh, self-possessed sort of guy. But look at the way he rides on the speedway track. And Tony Rickardson, well, he had to work hard to outwit that man Ryan Sullivan to get second place. And in the end, he would look at that Sullivan at first. Wow, what a wild move that was. But, uh, and he almost did take second place away. But this was the moment at which uh, Tony Rickardson, he took it away on the entrance to that turn two. But look at the way the Swede managed to hold his line on the inside. And when Sullivan thought there was a gap, it suddenly wasn't there anymore. Now he had to back off for a split second. And Rickardson, defending champion, as they went into the last lap, knew that he'd had that second place sewn up. So, second in the championship, five points behind Thomas Golub. And what a great meeting we have in prospect at Vosjens in Denmark. Jimmy Nilsson still third, but now a very distant third on 68. Jason Crump on 60 points. Hans Nielsen 58, Greg Hancock 56, Lee Adams 53 and Joe Screen still hanging on in there, 52 points in ninth place. So what a tremendous night it's been here in Big Gosh in Poland and uh, well, some of the action's been absolutely breathtaking. I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. Thanks for your company. Bye bye from Jack Burnicle till next time.